Do you have some extra ground beef just laying around in your freezer or your fridge that you need to get rid of, but you don't quite know what to make? Well, keep on watching because I've got six quick and easy ground beef recipes that are gonna blow your mind. So let's get cooking, y'all. Hey, hey friends, welcome back to this week's video. Today's video is plum full of ground beef recipes that are gonna be quick, easy, and simple. I don't know about y'all, but all three of those things are right up my alley. So if you like that kind of stuff or those kind of recipes, please keep watching. Let's get right on in to cooking all these yummy recipes. Come on, let's go. All right, y'all, so tonight's supper is hamburger steaks with mashed potatoes and probably some green beans and bread. Um, so for the hamburger steaks, I just have about two and a quarter pounds of ground beef. I have some minced garlic, beefy onion soup mix, two eggs, and some A1 steak sauce. Um, I just measure with my heart on this, but I only use one packet of the beefy onion soup mix. So that's everything you're gonna need in here besides your salt, pepper, garlic powder, just whatever seasoning you want. And I'm gonna go ahead and make some mashed taters as well. So I have some taters. I got another half a block of cream cheese and a half a stick of butter. I'll just cut that one in half, but that is what's gonna be for supper tonight. Now let's get cooking. All right, y'all, so starting out, I um, just diced up some taters. I um, got them in some water, and then I'm adding in some of the Better Than Chicken Bouillon in there. I'm just gonna give it a good old stir and let those get nice, soft, and tender. And then while those are boiling, we're gonna start making up our hamburger steak patty. So I got our burger in there. I added in some Nature Seasoning, Badia Complete, and then, of course, our beefy onion soup mix, three eggs and some garlic. We'll also add in some A1 steak sauce as well. And then we're gonna give it a good mixery right here with the best tools that God gave us. And I'm just gonna mix that until everything is well combined. Now, like I said, you've gotta be careful when you're mixing up your ground beef because you will kind of over mix it if, if you do it too much and then the meat will be tough. So once you get it mixed, I just form my little oval shape patties right there and yes I still put my little dimple in those as well because it does help keep the shape and everything so I'm gonna go ahead and get all of these done and shaped and then we'll get them on into the frying pan and basically you just want to fry them until they're nice and golden brown on both sides and you get that nice crust on them and um that's pretty much all you have to do. So it's pretty simple. This is an easy, easy supper idea for ground beef. And once you get them browned on both sides and they're cooked all the way through, you just take them on out of that skillet because that's what we're gonna make our gravy in. And then um, while those finish cooking, I just added a little bit more of that better than bouillon chicken in there, some garlic. These are just regular green beans, by the way. And then my taters already had the butter and the cream cheese. I just added in my heavy whipping cream and I'm just gonna mash them up until they're nice and creamy. And then that is um, everything for the sides. Now we're gonna go ahead and get back to this gravy. So everything is out of there. I just added in um, a little bit of butter to that. We're gonna stir in some flour until it gets to where it looks like it's forming a good roux. Now you do wanna let that flour cook down a little bit um, to get that taste out of it. And then I always start with a little bit of water first. And then I didn't have a lot of heavy whipping cream left, so I just mixed the water with it. That's why you don't see me putting in water. So I just mixed um, that with a little bit of that heavy whipping cream, and I'm just gonna make a nice gravy right here. And then I add in that store-bought jar of that beefy gravy, and it just kind of helps um, form a little bit of a better gravy. Now, I just put a little bit of extra water in this jar, shook it up. That way the gravy would be a little bit thinner. Um, and then once that gravy comes together, we'll just add those hamburger steaks back in and dinner is going to be ready because they're already cooked all the way through. So you don't have to, you know, cook them anymore. I just let them sit in there for about 10, 15 minutes while I make everything else and get everything else situated for supper. If you're looking for a new dinner idea, give this one a try y'all. It is very yummy. All 
right, y'all. So tonight's supper is one pot taco pasta. So you'll have to have some pasta of your choice. I'm just gonna use the small shells. You'll need a can of chicken broth. This is the 14.5 ounces. You'll need about two tablespoons of tomato paste, some mild diced tomatoes. This is just the great value brand of Rotel. You'll need a can of that. You'll need some garlic. And I think about four ounces of Velveeta cheese, which is perfect because this is a pack of the Velveeta cheese. So I always like to keep these in my prepper pantry. Then you'll need a package of taco seasoning, a cup of Monterey Jack, a cup of sharp cheddar, a pound of burger, and some butter. And then, did I say the milk? I think I did, a cup of milk. All right, so I don't have no Worcestershire sauce, but they say that you can use these three things right here to get you close to a Worcestershire sauce. So I have some ketchup. You'll need a tablespoon of ketchup, a tablespoon of white wine vinegar, and then a half of tablespoon of soy sauce. But anyways, that is supper tonight. So one pot taco pasta. I'll have what I used a link down below in my description box, but oddly enough, it tastes like Worcestershire. It's a little bit on the thicker side because of the ketchup, but if you don't have Worcestershire and a recipe calls for it, Definitely give this a try because oddly enough, it pretty much tastes similar to Worcestershire. So that's a good hack to have. All right, y'all. So I have my pound of burger in here. We're just going to go ahead and season it up with some nature seasoning, Badia Complete. And then we're just going to give it a good old mix through just to make sure everything is broken up good and get it nice and brown so we can start adding in our other ingredients. So there's about a tablespoon of butter and a big old heaping helping of garlic over here because we love it in this household. So the more the better. <laughs> and we'll just give that a good stir. Then you'll dump your taco seasoning, my homemade um, Worcestershire. Give that a good stir. And then once you get that stirred, you're going to add in your tomato paste and um, your chicken stock. You can use beef stock if you have it too, but chicken's all I had. Your Rotel tomatoes and the milk. Then you'll want to stir that well just to get that tomato paste um, broken up and mixed in really well with your other ingredients and then once that is done like that and it starts boiling that's when you'll add in your pasta of choice i use the little shells as the recipe called for because i had them on hand but i'll just give that a good mix then we'll put the lid on and let those noodles cook through and then um about i think it was about 15 minutes into it i took the lid off tested it made sure the noodles were tender and they were so i added in my Velveeta cheese gave that a good stir and then we'll add in the other cheeses it was a cup of the cheddar and of course a cup of the monterey jack and once i have that in there you'll stir it then you just Put your lid on it and let it sit there until everything is well combined. Now, I didn't serve this with like any kind of a bread or a side, but you could. You could make like black beans or you can even add black beans to it. Even some like um, some kind of a Mexican corn would be good with it. But I just put sour cream and taco sauce and some cilantro on top. And y'all, this was amazing. So for supper tonight, I'm going to make something that I haven't made in a very long time. And this is the first time I've ever used this recipe, but I'll have everything linked below in my description box. So if y'all are interested, y'all can go and check it out. But for this, we're making Swedish meatballs. Um, you'll need some egg noodles, you know, to serve everything on top of. But to make the meatballs, you'll need a little bit of milk, some onion. Um, the recipe only calls for one pound, but I'm doubling it. So I have two pounds of ground beef here, two eggs, some garlic, some nutmeg, parsley, and of course, salt, pepper, some oil to fry the meatballs in because I, I do have lean ground beef here, and then some um, breadcrumbs. And that's what we'll need to put the meatballs together. Now for the gravy, I know it's going to sound like a weird combination. Like I said, I've never made it this way before. So this is going to be a first time making this, <laughs> but for the gravy, you'll need some flour, butter, some milk, of course, and then grape jelly and Dijon mustard. 
So we'll see how this goes. But this is everything you're gonna need to make the Swedish meatballs. I do have some peas that we'll put on the side as well to go with it, because it just pairs perfectly. And of course, they're gonna get served over the egg noodles, so that's why they're out. But let's get to cooking, y'all. All right, I'll just start now in my mixing bowl. I just have my two pounds of burger. I'm gonna dump in a small diced onion. I'm gonna add in both eggs and then of course some garlic. Y'all know I don't measure my garlic and all of the seasonings that are linked down below in that um, in my description box because there were so many of them in there. But then I just added some salt and pepper and then the milk and of course the breadcrumbs. Um, I had panko on hand, so that's what I used. I'm gonna give it a good old mix with my hands right here. Um, it's just the easiest way to mix it, and that's why God gave them to you. So that's what I use. And once I have that all mixed together, I'm just gonna go ahead and start forming them into like little bitty balls. Um, a little bit smaller than like, um, maybe like a ping pong ball or something. Um, but you can make them smaller if you want to. But I'm just gonna go ahead and I got all of those made up and now I'm gonna get my skillet ready with just a little bit of oil in the bottom. I just kinda spread that around a little bit. And then I'll just go ahead and start placing the meatballs in there and get those nice and browned up on both sides and just cook them through. Now, it, I mean, I kinda flatten them a little bit, that way they're easier to turn. But once everything is cooked, then we'll start on this gravy. So I just have a little bit of butter and you wanna make sure you scrape up all that yumminess off the bottom of your skillet because that is where all the flavor is. Now you'll add in your flour and make your roux. You do wanna cook that flour out of there though. I decided that that wasn't enough so I added a little bit more flour in there as well. And then I start by just adding in that beef broth that I had on hand. And then a little by little, cause you don't want lumpy gravy, um, that way everything just comes together and thins out. Once it's like this, you'll add in your Dijon mustard and your grape jelly. I know it's a weird combination, but trust me, it works in this. Give it a good old stir and let everything melt into that gravy. And then you'll add in your milk a little at a time. That way your gravy's nice and smooth. And then you'll add in some pepper to that as well and some salt. It's just up to taste, however much you want. And then once that gravy's together, we will dump in the rest of the meatballs and kind of let those hang out in there while you get the egg noodles and the peas heated up and all of that. So they're already cooked through, but we're just gonna give a chance for that gravy to get nice and melted together here. All right now, so here are the peas and of course our egg noodles. I added a little bit of butter to them. And then of course our yummy meatballs. Now I just put it all in a bowl and served it just like that. And y'all, supper was absolutely delicious. This is definitely a must try. All right, y'all, so tonight's supper is egg roll in a bowl, but we're gonna go ahead and use beef. Usually I use pork, but since we are doing ground beef recipes this week, I am using lean ground beef. You'll need some tricolor coleslaw mix. Um, I like the tricolor better. You'll need some onion. This is the one I already had in the fridge. So we're gonna go ahead and use um, the purple onion. We're gonna use some minced garlic, soy sauce, ginger, some stir fry, oops, as I drop it, some stir fry sauce as well. And then of course, we're gonna serve that over rice. I just have the instant white rice. So that's all we're gonna make for supper tonight. It is quick, simple, and easy. And as y'all can see, this is everything you're gonna need besides your seasonings, whatever you want. Um, mine's probably gonna be nature seasoning and Badia complete, of course. But we're gonna go ahead and get this ground beef, brown it up. All right, so starting out on this one, we're just gonna go ahead and of course, start by browning out our ground beef. Now, once I have this kind of like chopped up a little bit, I'll add in my nature seasoning and my Vidya Complete. Y'all know those are my go-tos right here. We'll just give that another good mix and make sure all the seasoning is through that meat. Then we'll add in our chopped onion and then kind of mix that all well together too. And then we'll actually dump in some garlic and kind of mix that together. And then we'll add in our cabbage mix or coleslaw mix, whatever you want. And then um, 
I lost some footage here, but you'll just give that a good mix. And once that kind of cooks down a little bit, you'll add in your quarter cup of soy sauce. And by that time, it's done steamed down and um, you can add in some stir fry sauce or you, if you want, or you can serve it on top. So while all that was cooking down, I just made up some instant white rice according to the directions on the back of the box. Nothing fancy here, no special ingredients or anything, but I just figured I'd throw it on in here. Um, just to kind of show y'all that it doesn't have to be over complicated to have a yummy and delicious supper so once that comes to a bowl i'll just shut that heat off put that lid on it and now here is everything for that beef stir fry like i said i had done added in my quarter cup of soy sauce and some of the stir fry sauce i do mix a little bit of it in maybe like an eighth of a cup you just have to be careful because of the salt content but i just served this over the rice and topped it with some green onions and a little bit of extra um, stir fry sauce and y'all this is so good it's definitely a favorite y'all right, these were just too good not to share again so i'm making meatloaf muffins i have shared this in a previous video but we're just gonna mix up some meatloaf muffins right here i'm gonna pair it with some mashed potatoes and some green beans and that's gonna be supper this evening i'm telling y'all y'all definitely want to try these meatloaf muffins because they cook up so much quicker and it, they're so cute too to even serve so um, I'll have everything linked below if you're interested in this recipe because it was definitely delicious. So to our like two and a half pounds of ground beef, <laughs> I have onions and Lipton onion soup mix and our three eggs. Um, actually, I think it was three pounds of meat and then a whole sleeve of crushed up saltine crackers, some Worcestershire sauce and some ketchup so once you have all of that in there you'll just give it a good old mix right here um, and of course y'all know me by now i use my hands so i'm just going to give that a good mix and then we'll get out our muffin tin and we'll just go ahead and shape these into um, little bitty patties that we can put in here and kind of like shape into muffins <laughs> they're so cute and they quick they quick they cook so quickly it is perfect dinner so here they are before they go into a 375 degree oven for about 20 to 25 minutes and then here are my green beans and my taters that have some butter and cream cheese and just some nature seasoning in there i do add in some heavy whipping cream as you see right here before i give them a good old mashy mash <laughs> And then pretty much after this, everything is done for supper. You cannot beat this. It is a delicious and wonderful and so quick and easy. It's just, it's so good. So here are the potatoes, the green beans, and of course our little meatloaf muffins. They're so cute. I just serve this on up. And of course I put some ketchup on top of mine. Sometimes I use A1 steak sauce too. So tonight for supper, we're gonna make shepherd's pie and I'm gonna utilize the leftovers that I had in my fridge from the week of making other dinners. So I thought this would be perfect. It wasn't on the meal plan, but we're still gonna use some ground beef. So I'm gonna have to thaw this out, but I have a pound of ground beef. I got some shredded cheese. I got some leftover steamed broccoli, same for the green beans and leftover potatoes. So this is a good way to use up your leftovers and turn it into a absolutely delicious supper. So let's get cooking y'all. All right, so to our skillet, I added in our pound of ground beef. There's some nature seasoning, some garlic salt and onion powder go in there. And then we're also going to go ahead and throw in, of course, Badia Complete. <laughs> and then what we're gonna go ahead and get this um, chopped apart. It was still a little bit frozen right here in the center, but that was okay. I worked with it. Um, it wasn't frozen, but you know what I mean. Anyway, so we got that all browned through. Now we're gonna start adding in the goodies. So I have about two tablespoons of garlic right here, and I'll just give that a good mix through and make sure that's well distributed through everything. 
and then we'll go ahead and start um, getting our dish ready. I sprayed it with a little bit of butter spray. It was the only one I had on hand. I would have normally used like vegetable oil or something, but it worked. Now, I know typical shepherd's pie, you put the meat on the bottom and then the taters on top or the vegetables in the middle, but I done mine a little bit differently and it still turned out absolutely delicious. So if you ever mess up in the kitchen, don't worry. It's not a complete loss. You just roll with it and you keep on cooking and it turns out just fine. So I added Added my ground beef on top and then we're just going to use our leftover veggies so I just sprinkled the broccoli on there and then I put the green beans on top of it and then we're just going to cover this whole thing in some cheese and I'm going to sprinkle it with some Badia Complete. We're going to put it into a 350 degree oven until everything is nice and bubbly and cooked through. Y'all I am not kidding you this was probably the best shepherd's pie I've had in a long time. <laughs> now, you could use whatever veggies you had left over in your fridge or whatever you wanted to put in there, but I was trying to use what I had on hand and it worked out absolutely perfect. So this was a winner winter dinner let me just say that <laughs> it was so good but um i'll have a shepherd's pie recipe linked in my description box below but that does it for this week's video i hope you all enjoyed everything if y'all did give me a thumbs up leave me a comment below and think about subscribing and becoming part of my youtube family i would absolutely love to have every one of y'all join and become part of my family i love you all and i thank you all so much for coming back every week and enjoying my videos if you are in need of prayer please let me know in the comments below i would be honored to pray for you all but until next time my sweet friends god bless bye